Ooh, we can actually continue his. Or we can start on some of the others. Um... Hmm. As you leave your haven, a homeless man bumps into you. You turn after him, but he blends into the crowd before you can even get a good look at his face. Instinctively, you check your pocket. A note? Looking at Manhattan Bridge. Come over. D. Let's go there. Knowing there are only so many places with a good enough view of the Manhattan Bridge, you decide to check the ones that aren't likely to be crowded at this time of night. It doesn't take long before you hit the jackpot. Jane's Carousel. As you're walking along the pier, you notice a lonely figure sitting on the bench, steel flask in his hand, his legs up on the railing. Soon enough, you hear a familiar voice. Evening turned to night, and as the final flickering rays of sunlight gave way to the kind nocturnal shadows, so did the last of the jabbering tourists give way to a blessed silence. And yet, I couldn't shake the feeling. Pausing mid-sentence, he leans back over the bench, backrest, and looks straight at you. Upside down, his face looks even creepier than usual. That I wasn't alone. I have to ask, what is it with you and narrating? It takes the edge off. Just like this. He takes a sip, then points the flask in your general direction. Fancy a sip? Probably wouldn't hurt. Sure, why not? Take the flask and take a swig. It's blood, alright, mixed with other frivolous substances, some of which you recognize, while others you probably don't want to know. That's the spirit. Now that you're good and soused, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. There's been another one. Killing, I mean. Down by the docks. Same M.O.? The blood? The graffiti? Yep. It was our gal, alright. Victim sucked dry, same as before. Another sign on the wall. Something about impending doom and oh lord, he coming. The particulars escape me. You know that night I saw her? She looked so frail. So innocent. Deep inside, I was hoping she'd be spooked, get out of town. That maybe, just maybe, that'll be the end of it. But that's me, you know, hopelessly optimistic. Any idea why she's doing it? Doesn't really matter at this point. Whether she's Kane's chosen or just a poor girl gone nuts after a botched embrace, one thing is painfully clear. It gives you a look full of worry and sadness. She ain't gonna stop. He takes a swig, as if to puncture, punctuate the sentence. So anyway, I've set up a meeting. Natu neutral ground, public space, shouldn't get too ugly. Still, I was hoping you could tag along. Is it Larson again? Nah, let's leave the poor schmuck alone for now. It's pretty clear he's just as clueless as we are. He looks away and pats the bench next to where he's sitting. You might want to sit for this one. Now let's make a joke. Unless you want to introduce me to your parents, I can probably handle it. Come on, who is it? Valerie. I'm sorry, I must have misheard you. Want to try that again? I know how it sounds. Listen, kid. I know you two didn't exactly hit it off, but she's not as bad as you might think. I mean, in some respects, she's probably worse. But, <laughs> but she can be reasoned with. Boy, is he an optimist. <laughs> Once again, he goes for the flask, but stops himself mid-motion. Look, the way I see it, we ain't got a choice. As much as I want to help Sena, she's clearly a few bats short of a belfry. More people are going to die unless we do something about it. Do you really think we can trust someone like Valerie? D'Angelo almost does a spit take. Fuck no. <laughs> but we can do business with her. I'm just worried that her asking price might be too steep for my liking. But then again, you don't always get what you want, huh? Noticeably proud of his words of wisdom, he tries to top them with one last swig. A single drop falls between his crooked teeth. He looks at the empty flask with the utmost contempt. Well, ain't that fucking poignant. Muttering a curse under his breath, he makes a valiant effort to get up off the bench. As he staggers, struggling to remain upright, you offer your shoulder Lena. Shoots you a smile that he's as crooked as it is a feckin'. Uh, 
He shoots you a smile that's as crooked as it is affectionate. Hey, kid. You meet his gaze, trying to look friendly rather than condescending. You're alright. And with that heartfelt moment, you bid adieu to the sprawling vista and make your way towards the bridge. Next stop, Manhattan. Entering the park from Midtown Manhattan, you promptly take a spot by one of the al one of the alleys, not very deep into the park. Minutes pass, 5, 10, 15. You start to wonder if she's even going to show up. Suddenly, you hear a familiar voice, but with an unfamiliar tone. She sounds almost nice. Hello, Ginny. Or Ginny. There she is, walking along the sign of the fountain. The side of the fountain. She looks less out of place here than back at that junkie infested hovel, but only by a slight margin. Something tells you there are only so many places she would feel at home, and probably not ones you would want to find yourself in. Val. She glances over at you, barely no noting your presence. Sorry about last night. Nothing personal, you understand. When I get caught up in the moment, I can get a bit intense. I can attest to that. Play nice, you two. We have some business to discuss. All work and no play, huh? Why not? She turns to D'Angelo and flutters her eyelashes. You can tell she doesn't see you as her equal, but this come-hither routine is getting kind of unnerving. Lay it on me, sugar. We're here to talk about Sana. Who? Oh, right, the Thin Blood. What about her? The girl's a threat. We need to find her. Figure we can do it faster if we work together. Uh-huh. Keep going, honey. Because I have a feeling there's a catch coming. The catch is... Awkward silence. It's not often you see him at a loss for words. Seeing him struggle, you decide to jump in. We want the girl to stay alive. See? Now that's a deal breaker right there, sugar. If you want me to even consider it, you'll have to sweeten the pot. Once again, she turns to today, Angelo. And I bet tall, dark, and handsome over here might have some ideas. Just tell us what you want. Oh, you're no fun anymore. She wants a higher profile target. To show off to the prince what a good little scourge she is. That all you care about nowadays, huh? Playing the game? Climbing the ranks? A smile creeps onto her lips. You can tell it's forced. Angelo definitely knows how to get under her skin. That's my Ginny, a big old brain and a heart to match. Once again, she turns to you. I knew right away he tried to help this girl. He does love him a damsel in distress. But you, I'm still not sure what your angle is. I don't have an angle. Just seems like the right thing to do. Oh wow, seriously? Ginny, you got yourself a live one. Good for you. So there, you know my terms. Contact me when you've made up your mind. Don't take too long, though. I'm a lucky girl. I might just find your little thin blood on my own. Still, I hope we can work together. We did make a good team back in the day, didn't we? Slowly, seductively, she puts her arms around his shoulders. She glances over to you, clearly enjoying how awkward it makes you feel. D. Once this meeting is over, you'll have some explaining to do. You hear that, Ginny? You're in some hot water now. Anyway, withdrawing from the strange half-embrace, she flicks to Angelo's nose gently with her index finger. Almost instantly, she turns from flirtatious to dispa dispassionate. However this plays out, I have a feeling we'll meet again, sooner than later. Until then, without sparing you another glance, she disappears down an unlit park alley. D'Angelo watches her go, the look on his face, a mixture of longing and guilt, is borderline comical. Finally, he turns back towards you as if breaking some spell he was under. Well, that could have gone a lot worse. What did you mean by higher profile target? It's not what, it's whom. She wants me to give her Larson. What? Larson? Why would she want him? He's a primogen, remember? A weak one, but still. For a scourge, he's a much more valuable target than some no-name duskborn. And it just so happens that a certain someone might have some dirt on him. He squints, rubbing the bridge of his nose. Fuck it. I'm heading back to the office. Need to put my feet up. 
Get some blood flowing to the old noggin. You coming? You nod. Why the hell not? And so, you make your way towards Fifth Avenue. You've got a long way ahead of you, and a lot of stuff to figure out. Although it's not your first visit, you still find it hard to navigate the dark, rusty-ridden corners of the grain terminal. Luckily, this time, you're with someone who could probably do this blindfolded, so you just follow his lead. As you both climb in the rickety stairs, like coming from D'Angelo's office, a quick look assures you that no, he did not, in fact, leave it on. You bust through the door like an undead Tango and Hooch. Was that Turner and Cash? Ready to unleash unholy fury on the intruders. You have to expect an Anarch Death Squad or an SI hunting party. What's an SI? Second Inquisition. Okay. Instead, you get Larson, who nearly falls out of the chair when you two bust in. Larson, what the hell are you doing here? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm waiting for you two bozos to show up. Seemingly both intrigued and irritated by the surprise visit, Angela walks over to a cabinet and pulls out her fresh cigar. And now that the clowns have arrived, does his highness mind telling us what brings him to our merry circus tent? Her. Points at a tiny shadow cowering in the corner of the room. To your astonishment, it turns out to be a very familiar face. The blood... No, not again. Please. Oh, so he has her. Where the hell did you find her? Outside my front door. She must have heard of me. Found out where I lived. It's not uncommon knowledge among the dustborn. She probably figured I could help, but honestly, I have no idea what to do with her. I mean, I should turn her into the prince, but that's just another strike against my people. Then again, I can't just set her loose, not after what she did. Fuck, D'Angelo. You can tell that I'm desperate if my first instinct was to come to you. No, Larson, I would attribute that decision to what's left of your common sense. He leans over to you. Hey, kid, I think we should call it a night. Just give me some time to talk to the girl. Maybe I'll get through to her somehow. The sign, the sign. It's always there. Though I ain't holding my breath. Honestly, you're glad to leave me. Him to it. Spending the night in a small room with a tiny serial killer somehow doesn't seem too appealing. Still, you're hoping Dan Angelo will be alright. He's got some tough choices ahead of him. 